Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC314, our course on media and technology. Thank you for joining the class today, connecting to the class. Uh, may I request somebody to please pray, and then we will get started. So I'm going to get started. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. Thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you uh, for all the strength that you have given us to join the class today. We thank you for your grace, mercy, and kindness upon us. And God, I pray that this class will be a blessing to us. We will learn uh, every single skills that we can use for your kingdom and uh, be with us. Holy Spirit, uh, you help us to understand when pastor teaches teaches us uh, the things God and I pray for uh, good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session and God may everything that we speak and we do through the class be done for your glory we give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus name I pray amen amen so all right good morning everyone uh, once again uh, let's pick up from where we paused last, well, I think it's more than two weeks ago, and then we will move forward. Let me share my PDF. All right. So, two weeks back, we started off talking about the steel equipment. Uh, just a quick review we spoke a little bit about uh, software used for making graphics and uh, you know nowadays uh, we have ai generated graphics as well so you can give a little text prompt and you can get a graphic generated for us it generated uh, so it's you know a lot of advancements of things have developed and you know we use some of that these days as well or you can at least have some initial ideas generated through using ai you can have some graphics generated yeah, video editing software, so to edit video. Uh, we talked about that. We just shared some, you know, some practical things that uh, we learned along the way as we worked with video editing. And then desktop publishing uh, software, we went through that. And the last one that we looked at was on media presentation software. Uh, and uh, these days we are using proper pro presenter. Uh, but there are many other uh, uh, commercial software that's available that you can use. There's also even free and open source software that you could use. And of course, we have PowerPoints, which have PowerPoints or slides uh, that can be used. So there are just so many options available if you want to present, project something uh, during uh, the service or meeting. So let's move forward now into some other areas, hopefully we'll cover cameras and uh, get into some of the audiovisual uh, audio part, audio equipment part, and slowly uh, just give, give us some ideas on these things. So cameras, photography, this is another area that is very useful. Uh, it's useful because, like they say, one picture is worth a thousand words, right? So if you share a very nice picture of what's happening, it communicates a lot to people. You know, so sometimes you want to share pictures about you know, the service, about um, ministry being done, the work that's being done. So all of these things, you can take those photographs, you can share them with your congregation or with other people. Mm, it can have, it can be very impactful. It can be very inspiring. It can be very encouraging, and it also lets people know what exactly is happening. So, I have, you know, using photography, using pictures to communicate, whether with your congregation or to people outside, uh, is very useful. It's a useful thing. So, just some thoughts on this. Uh, I'm, I'm not you know, getting into details, but just to give you some idea of how we think about this. Uh, so obviously, 
uh, no, nowadays, you know, we take lots and lots of pictures using our smartphones. And uh, in many instances, this is very good. It's good enough to me. You can take pictures of your phone and uh, you know, use them on social media, use them in other places. And uh, it does the work for us. It's good enough. Uh, just some guidance when you're doing it um, many times, you would normally take uh, pictures in landscape, horizontal mode, so you can get a good view of what's happening. Uh, take it at a good resolution. Generally recommended is 1920, 1080 pixels. Um, uh, and, and, and a good frame per second. So that means uh, the, the gender is a default set. So that de de determines the amount of light and the sharpness of the image. I'll explain, we'll explain that later. And so good lighting. Uh, and uh, if you're doing a video, you know, don't want background noise on it, or uh, sometimes even other shadows and this thing, other thing could be considered as bad background noise. So uh, that's so in general, you know, what pictures we take with our smartphones more than enough. But when you want to take pictures that you would later want to use in other things, like if you want to use these foot uh, pictures on your website, or you want to use these pictures in uh, some other material, like doing brochures, or you're doing um, documents, PDF documents, or you're using those pictures to as part of your presentations, things like that. Then um, that's where you would like to have some high quality, good quality pictures. And this is where cameras come in. Right? So for general purpose, social media use, you know, smartphones are good but in other cases you want high quality you think about buying some buying camera so when you're going to th when you think of buying cameras then these just some just some guidance you know you would want of course to say what what are the quality pictures that i would be able to get using this camera is the camera itself easy to use and if it's something that, you know, if you're covering events, that is uh, events that are being held in different places, you need to be able to move the camera around easily. So is this camera going to be stationary or is it going to be something where somebody needs to carry around, move around to cover an event? Then you need something that's light, not heavy, uh, easy to use, hold, so on. Uh, then you also want to think about control of settings, which we will explain it later, you know, so that I can, I can compose my image the way I want it to compose the picture. So if I can have control over the settings that will uh, give the person taking photos that much more control. Uh, but when I buy a camera, you also ask the question, you know, can I uh, you know, interchange lens? Uh, okay, maybe I start off with a basic lens and in the future, if I want to, you know, buy additional lens and be able, can I use other lens with this camera. So those are kind of questions we would ask. And then, of course, what is the cost of buying a camera? So in terms of the different camera options that we have, we just do a little comparison. There are a lot of smartphone cameras, which we just mentioned. Um, there are basic point-and-shoot cameras. You just turn it on and shoot. doesn't give you much uh, uh, liberty in terms of adjusting settings or uh, so on. Then there's the next step is our, our mirrorless cameras, or sometimes they refer to as micro four thirds cameras. And then at the top of the you know, top of the line or top end is the DSLR cameras. Now, generally, people would say like, yeah, if you can, if, you know, if you have the money, definitely it's good to invest in a DSLR camera because of uh, many benefits. You can, uh, you know, you'd be able to you know, generally these cameras. Uh, 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 give you the flexibility to uh, give you a lot of control on, on what your picture you can take. You can see it through the lens, you can uh, uh, compose your image, uh, control a lot of the settings, and uh, they, 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 they filter out a lot of the noise around the picture. And uh, of course, you can expand, you can change lens, you can do a lot more with it. So depending on the kind of camera, you, you know, basically, like we said, you can start up with smartphone cameras, uh, just tell people, hey, just shoot. And this is what we do, right? you know, for 
for some of our social media pictures. We just tell our people, hey, just shoot with your own phone and send it in, and you know we'll uh, touch it up and use it on social media. So that's kind of when we want to do something quick and easy, we use that. Then there are people who may have their own point and shoot cameras. Uh, they, they are small, they're easy to car carry around. It's not very big, bulky. They can take it when they go on trips and so on. So use that. They get those images and they share it with us. And uh, we can use those pictures. But as a church, when you want to invest into something, we, we have invested or bought these um, DSLR cameras that we use. Uh, when our media team goes to cover an event, they will try to get you know, the best pictures as possible because we're going to use it uh, in other places. And uh, we also like to keep a good record of things happening. So generally, think about these things and you know uh, some of the things that will help you make it, make a decision about the kind of camera, the details that you look at. Is uh, is there a manual mode allowed? That means can I manually control or adjust the settings uh, when before taking a picture? So basically, uh, there are three main things, right? The, the aperture, the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. Am I allowed to control these things? If the answer is yes, then okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Then it's going to help you take better pictures. Um, the aperture is basically the opening of the lens. So if you want more light, you make it, you open it up a little wider, uh, bigger. Or if you want to cut out light, you reduce the aperture. So that gives you a control on how much light comes in. Along with that, there is the shutter speed. That's how quickly the shutter will open and close. Uh, again, that also uh, controls the light that hits the sensor. And so if you use slow speed, obviously you're going to let more light come in, uh, which means the image is going to be brighter. Uh, and if you use a uh, very high speed, you're going to less, let light, less light come in. And uh, the image, so you, you adjust it based on, you know, the ambient light and where the sun is, and uh, those kinds of things, you adjust that. So you can control how much light is hitting the, the sensor. Uh, and the ISO is the level of sensitivity uh, that you want. So now if you uh, look for uh, higher uh, ISO, uh, you could uh, make the uh, image more sensitive. So in, in darker situations, in, in situations where there's dark, you increase the ISO, give more light. You want it to be a little bit more sharper. And there's all, when it's bright, a lot of light around you you you, you can talk if you, you want how how much light you want to allow you want to allow more light increase the aperture lower the shutter speed and increase the iso you let more light come in get a bright light so you play around with these three controls and you can compose your picture along that now obviously uh, as a pastor i'm not doing these things uh, I don't take photographs and go around taking you know, I don't do all that. It's obviously the media team that does it. But when they come to you saying, hey, we want, we have three options. Uh, we want to buy a camera and here are the three options. Then you, you compare these things, right? Okay, here's one camera, there, another camera, another camera. Of course, price is an important thing. But at the same time, you look at, okay, how, you know, what is the, the, the difference and then the control that we have over these cameras and uh, in terms of that settings control versus cost versus how easy it is to carry so you look at all these things and then say okay you know, this is the best camera for our use that we're looking at therefore let's go with this just for you to understand and make the right decision that's all uh, you and I are not going to be as fast as going around busy shooting photos. We are busy ministering the word. Uh, but when it comes to making uh, uh, information on making a decision on which camera to buy, these are some things to think about. Uh, some other things, uh, of course, is uh, the quality of the image that you can get. So you can also ask, you know, what's the best image that can come from this camera? Are uh, you want something of higher quality? 
you know, 20 megapixels. That's that's good. Um, how how quickly you know, what at what speed can we take photos on this camera? So the frames per second. So if you are going to be using the camera for action related things, yeah, uh, then of course you want a higher frames per second. If it's that's not the purpose of this camera, but just gentle shots. That, then you don't need something very with high FPS. Also, another question you would ask is, can I save the raw image, or in what format does this camera allow me to save the images? Um, many cameras these days will allow me to give you both the raw and the JPEG. Uh, so uh, the advantage with the raw is that you can work on that raw image and you know sharpen it, refine it. Uh, color graded, etc. Work with it to improve the the final image, and then save it in a JPEG format. So uh, that's the advantage. If you can actually work with the raw image, make it better, however you want, and then save it. So that's an advantage. So you can, so these are some thoughts to keep in mind when you're deciding. Okay, you know we are going to invest in buying a camera. You are, you, know, you look at all these things, and then you make a decision. And there are, of course, lots of good uh, manufacturers or brands that are available these days. Okay, this information for you uh, to when you're making a choice on camera or your church or ministry. Now let's change uh, uh, our topic a little bit and talk about the PA system, the audio equipment. This again, uh, this probably is a very important part of uh, ministry. That means because obviously we want people to hear the word of God, and uh, uh, which means that when you're up on the pulpit and you're preaching and teaching, uh, people need to be able to hear. Or for that matter, let's talk about the worship. When worship, when people are leading worship. Uh, you want the congregation to be able to participate in that worship in a meaningful way. So that means the sound system plays an important part in all of this. So just some general information here, right? So we need to keep in mind that uh, whatever PA system we are using, and we will talk about this a little later, it is actually creating what we call as a sound field inside the hall, the auditorium. So whether you have a small hall that seats 50 people, or whether you have a big auditorium that seats 700 or maybe even 1,000 people, basically, using the PA system, you're creating a sound field. That means there's a distribution of sound inside the auditorium. And how and this PA system that you're using, the way it is set up creates the sound field and the person people who are sitting depending on where they are sitting are going to have a different experience so one main thing is in the sound level in the decibel level uh, that it is going to be so let's say the goal is to have something uniform, as uniform as possible, and as comfortable as possible in the sound level. Right? If you don't want something where you know it is, uh, it's uh, it's so hard on the ears that people can't enjoy or participate in the worship, or they can't uh, listen very clearly to what you're saying when you're preaching. It's got to be the sound that they hear should be comfortable and it should be clear. They should be able to hear very clearly what is being spoken or the worship leader or the music and so on. So that's our goal because otherwise it can be very disruptive. And I've entered, I've gone into some auditoriums where, you know, I remember once when I went to one particular service and we were actually sitting at the back you know it's not a very big auditorium maybe uh 200 300 people auditorium 
and we're actually sitting, I was actually sitting on the last, the second last row, somewhere like that. And the sound was so painful on my ear. I actually wanted to get up and leave. It, it's not, it was not that they were singing bad, the people were singing, the worship was good, meaning these were good people, uh, good uh, worship. But the sound was so painful. And I was sitting at the back. Uh, I actually wanted to get out. I couldn't sit there. I was wondering, like, how are all these other people sitting inside this auditorium and they are able to endure this it, this, this uh, sound? You know, the worship itself was good. I mean, the, you know, the songs that were being sung was good, but the sound that was coming on the ear was so painful. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I just sat through it. Uh, and then uh, went through. But I'm just sharing my experience where the songs that are being sung may be very uh, good, very worshipful, etc. The band may be you know, doing their best and all of that. But if the person sitting inside the auditorium, if they are not having a good sound audio experience, it can be very difficult. And then in our own context, you know, when we've been in different auditoriums, I've always I've had people many times come and complain to me. We can't hear the sound at the back, and that's I'm sitting that side there. I can't hear anything. Or sometimes they come and say, I'm sitting here, it's too loud, it's too painful. They come and you know share this. And then I have to immediately talk to our, you know, our our, our, our sound team and say, Hey, this is the feedback we got, we've got to do this, you know, we've got to fix it. So how would you go about addressing that? So the thing to understand is that the way the PA system that you're using is creating a sound field, and then you need to measure at different points in the hall, in the auditorium. You actually need to measure what is the sound level. Now, measuring the sound level is very easy. right? So you can download an app on your phone. Uh, the simplest way to do it. Um, okay, let me just, uh, yeah. You uh, you download a mobile decibel reading app. Like you can uh, download a sound level meter or decibel meter. Just download this an app that's available and just put it on your phone. And you can walk around in the auditorium uh, and record it. Like just, you know, let the band play. Set the uh, turn on the PA system, band play, and then just move around in the auditorium and say, "Hey, this is the sound level that's actually at these different points in the auditorium." And you will obviously notice that at some points, uh, sound levels are very high. Some points maybe it's a little lower. You know, you, you can you can record that, so you get a little understanding of the sound field inside the auditorium. Now, as a guideline, right, this is something we have to keep in mind. About 65 dB is good for the human ear. Right? If you go below 45, they're not going to be able to hear clearly. Right? It's too, too low, too low. If you go above 85 dB, it's going to start hurting their ear here. Right? People are going to feel start feeling uncomfortable. And uh, it is going, you know, depending on their tolerance level, they will start complaining. Right? So basically, this is 65, between 65 and 85 dB is where you want the sound levels to be. Now, of course. You need to take into account that, okay, when the auditorium is full of people, there's going to be a lot of absorption. So then uh, the actual sound level, when measured in an empty hall, would be different. The sound level, when me measured in an empty hall, would be different from the sound level when the auditorium is full of people. Our, our, the level must be when people, there are people, obviously. So you 
also have somebody quietly measuring when people are inside the auditorium. Right? So when there are people sitting there inside the auditorium, a lot of absorption is taking place. People are wearing all different clothes, and so the sound is being absorbed by people and different things that are there inside the auditorium hall. And so the net sound field may be very different from when you do it in an empty auditorium. So keep that in mind. Right? So when people are there, you measure. Okay. So this is what people are actually experiencing. When we have people sitting inside the auditorium, the worship team is playing or the preacher is preaching. This is what they're actually experiencing in different parts in the, in the hall. Okay? And the goal is to keep it between 65 and 85. Okay, 65 and 85. That range throughout the auditorium. Now you will, it's very difficult to get an exactly uniform field sound field throughout the auditorium. I mean, you need to position your speakers and all of that in a, in a, in a nice way uh, for, for us to get a very nice uniform sound field. It's not good. It's not easy. And in many auditoriums, it's not even possible because of the design of the, the architecture of the auditorium. But as long as the range is at a comfortable level, between 65 to 85, People are going to be happy. They'll be fine. Okay. So this is something to keep in mind. And very simple. Tell a few people, download the app on the phone. Just record the sound during the service or during the meeting. Just see. Yeah, what is that? Okay. If it's within this range, fine. Nothing to worry about. If it is below, people are going to say, I can't hear. If it is way above, you know, there, there is a tolerance level, of course. They won't complain when it's 90 or 95. But if it's getting too low, you're going to have complaints. People will say, hey, I can't, I can't handle this. It's painful. And so then you know what to do. You know, need to know. Keep it in this range. Okay? So this is something very simple, but it is very important. So we do tell our people, you know, our, our sound people, hey, keep checking. Make sure everything is fine. And uh, people are comfortable. At the back of the auditorium, they should be able to hear. The front should not be too loud. They shouldn't feel the ears are hurting, all that. So keep a good uniform feel inside the auditorium. Now, um, so, so that's as far as the sound field is concerned, the sound levels, audio levels, which is important. Now when we talk about okay, the PA system itself, Right. So what kind of a PA system, how would you go about, you know, thinking about uh, buying a PA system? Um, these days we have what we call as a prepackaged PA system. That means everything is put, in, put into a box, you know, the different components. And so it's very easy for us, easy to carry around more. Uh, um, um, and so portability is a... Is a, is a good thing when you have prepackaged systems. But then there is not control over what's happening. Whereas if you have the ability to position your speakers in the different parts of the speakers in different places, you have better control. Uh, we'll make sure we don't know that. So, so you have okay, portability where it's control. So for example, when we, we have some portable systems, it's easy, just you know, take one or two boxes, uh, the amp amplifier and thing is well. the speakers and amplifiers all built into one box. Uh, but especially it's, it's useful when we are doing some events, small events here or there. You, know, you just take it, you have 50, 50, 100 people max. So you just put it there, plug it in, connect your microphones, you're ready to go. So it serves that kind of a purpose. We can move it around easily, and which we do. We have different events in small venues. It, it helps us with that. But then when you have a large gathering, uh, then you don't use those small portable systems. You've got you know, speakers that are big that can support the whole audience in, in the auditorium, and the speakers have to be positioned properly uh, so that there's a proper sound. Okay. 
So different things that go into it, there are microphones, cables, amplifiers, mixers, uh, there's signal processing effects that you can create, use any equalizers that you can create through software. Uh, I just mentioned that. So in general, when you're talking about this piece, right? and I'm not an expert, I'm not an audio engineer, uh, but I'm just speaking from a pastoral perspective in the sense that yeah, you are, it's good to understand these things so then you can know what you know what is going where things are going wrong, right? So on. So basically, um, you have you know you would have these speakers uh, on on the stage. This is very basic setup, and uh, you have uh, uh, what we call as a front of that front of house, FOH, front of house console. So you've got a big mixer sitting up in front of the auditorium. Uh, you've got, uh, you don't see it in this picture, but you've got uh, mics through which you know, the sound is coming in. It com comes into this console, it's all mixed. And the output is sent back to speakers, uh, which then provide the sound for the auditorium. So this mixer here, this console here, is mixing the sound from all the speakers that are being used inside the auditorium, and it's sending the output to the speakers that provide sound inside the auditorium. Now, at the same time, let's say we are having live stream that's going on. For live streaming, the sound has to be mixed differently. So the output from here, the raw output, goes to another console where over here somebody is doing mixing of the sound for streaming. So uh, over here, there may be additional output coming from uh, a presenter for the live audience. And uh, there is also, uh, uh, this, this Mac is then being used to mix uh, the, the output. And that then if this one goes out to our live stream. So the audio is being mixed. So main thing that you need to take away is the sound that is mixed for the auditorium, the in-house, and the mixing of the sound for the live stream audience, both of these have to be done separately because the control for the live stream is a little different from what you're doing in-house, right? So you actually need these two different consoles or mixers um, taking place. So sometimes what we have, what we have observed is uh, people on the live stream, you know, they say, hey, I can't hear properly. The audio is not loud enough. Uh, everything is fine inside the auditorium. Everybody's happy inside the auditorium. But our live stream audience, they're not happy with the audio. Uh, what's the problem? The mixing for the live stream has to be done differently. Maybe they have to boost up the volume, uh, et cetera to make sure that the live stream audience can hear comfortably at a level that's good for them. So that has to happen. And uh, yeah, so just keep that in mind. So like we said, there are prepackaged PA systems, which are, you know, the whole issue is about portability versus control. So what would be the main components that go into this audio system. And these are very basic things uh, that you uh, need just to keep in mind. Uh, the output power of these speakers are, are measured in wattage. So uh, typically, um, for a small audience, you may need about 350 to 500 watts. For large venues, you need about 500 1,000 watts, or then bigger, more the crowd, the more wattage or power output you need. So if your sound person comes and says, hey, um, you know, the current PA system can only give us 500 watts, 
uh, but we've got a venue that has a uh, thousand people uh, so this is not going to be enough then he's just letting you know that you need more powerful speakers for the kind of audi audience and auditorium that you're in right so he's, he's meant this reference to the output that the sound system can give you need something bigger so uh, we have uh, just generally uh, you'll have stage monitors uh, this provides sound for people on the stage so they can hear what's going on you've got the main speakers that provide sound for people in the audience uh, these main speakers come in again with different uh, built-in uh, speakers that provide sound in different ranges we'll talk about that and then many times you have what are uh, referred to as subwoofers. So you'll see these big boxes sitting under the main uh, speakers, which uh, uh, they, they, they provide uh, lower frequency sound uh, to kind of, you know, so basically sound. There are these different frequencies that are, that we are put, emitting into the audience, and people are hearing mix of this coming into the years so it has to be something that uh, that, that it gives a good blend so these subwoofers give the lower frequency sound now in the main speaker itself in this big box here in this main speaker uh you have what are referred to as mid-range woofer and tweeter so sometimes your sound person may come and say the tweet tweeters are gone don't think what is he talking about? Tweeters are gone. It means that inside this box, these big main speakers, the that part of the box that gives high frequency sound, the tweeters, they're damaged. And so people will hear, of course, they will be able to hear from the mid-range and the woofers. And if you have subwoofers, they'll be able to hear it. But this frequency is they don't get it. So they feel like something is missing. Sound is not complete. Right. So then, of course, you need to get that fixed. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, here's the, uh, the the breakup here. You know, the subwoofers are producing uh, uh, frequency, lower frequency. The woofers are around 500 hertz, mid-range, 203k. Tweeters are producing high frequency, 2k or 3k. Right. So basically, there are these within that speaker. There are different parts of the speaker that produce in different frequencies. But just keep that in mind because if your sound person says our woofers are gone, then it's that means this frequency sound is people are not going to hear. They feel something is missing. So it's not sound is not good. Something is missing. Uh, or they say you know the tweeters are gone. High frequency sound they won't hear. So you need a good combination, a mix of these for. Give, give them give the audience a good sound okay the other thing you just need to keep in mind is that uh, the speakers can be um, powered or empowered active or passive so uh, that means these active speakers there's a built-in amplifier internal amplifier whereas for passive speakers you need an amplifier outside to boost the sound to power up so that's all it means active or passive Typically, these, these self-contained uh, speaker systems would be active. They already have a built-in amplifier, so you can carry a box around. You don't have to carry many pieces. It makes it easy. And if you have a full-range speaker, if somebody says, we want to buy a full-range speaker, that means it's one cabinet that has all of these things built in, the, uh, the mid-range and the tweeter, like, like what we saw in this picture. This is a full-range speaker. It's got everything in it, makes it easy. And if you want to give additional sound, you can do the subwoofers, make it you know, complete out the sound. Just some things to keep in mind when you're looking at audio equipment for the church. And uh, another important part of the audio equipment are in-ear monitors. Uh, these are things that are being used, that are used by the worship team uh, on stage. So instead of using the, back, the monitors on stage, that is instead of using these things on stage nowadays you can eliminate that you don't need that and instead 
you provide people on stage with these in-ear monitors. So they just put it in and uh, they get sound coming into them from the mixer uh, and uh, they can hear the sound. So then they know how they are sounding and how overall uh, the output is sounding. So then they can adjust their, their signaling, et cetera. So, so these in-ear monitors are something that's useful to invest in. Of course, remember then for each person on stage, so if you have five or six people on stage, uh, you need to buy them a receiver, and of course they can bring the headset. So it's a little bit more expensive as compared to just having these stage monitors, but it is very really useful. So nowadays, uh, if you can afford to do that, then you, know, you can go ahead and buy these in-ear monitors for the people on stage, right? So let me pause here. Are you all with me so far? Is it, uh, Useful information, lovely me. Okay. Uh, so nothing to you know, nothing to. You know, I'm not going to ask you exams on what what speaker to buy and all of that. It's just information for you to understand when you are setting up your church and so on. Yara, you have a question. Please. Hi, Mr. Question. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Uh, I'm not, it was not a question. Okay. okay, so this is just information for you to keep in mind, um, you know, so that uh, um, you can have conversation with your audio people, right? And uh, and talk to them and understand, you know, so when they're talking to you, uh, you understand what they're saying. So if they say, hey, this is the problem, uh, we need to, you know, uh, we need to fix this or fix that. At least you understand, okay, this is what he's saying. They can say, okay, or I can say, wait, or whatever, you know. Um, it's not for us to know everything, but enough to have a conversation with the person who's in charge of the sound so that, uh, you know, the goal is inside the hall, sound has to be good. People have to be comfortable so that the worship and the preaching can serve people well. With that in mind, you can tell the people. You know, and I do tell our media team, hey, our sound team, hey, I know, please do a sound audit, check everything, you know, make sure sound levels are comfortable. Or if the congregation gives me feedback, I immediately talk to our media team, hey, so, you know, our people said sound in that corner was not good, or some problem was there, please go and check. Because, uh, you know, you can have good worship, you can have good preaching, but if people can't hear properly, it uh, it's uh, you know you're missing out on some of them right? so from that perspective it's good to know these things and check right so um let's take a break i know it's a little early but let's take a break we'll come back we'll talk about microphones and some other aspects of this audio system uh, again just this only for information so you understand and you know how to make decisions uh, as you go along okay I'm not going to ask you to memorize any of this. I think it's just for you to have the information. So we'll come back at 11 o'clock and continue this. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> 